one of the things I used to do every year was try to go see Mo around his birthday. And I would spend some time, sometimes we'd play golf, sometimes we'd go hit golf balls and, and whatnot. And we knew at this time that Mo wasn't doing well as far as with his health. So this, I, I knew this would probably be the last time that I ever saw Mo or had time to play golf with him. Thank you. And uh, it was July of 2004. And so we flew up to Canada. I was with Larry Olson, a good friend of mine. He was also the, the president of Natural Golf. Good. And we flew in there to go spend, uh, spend a couple days with Mo, see him for his birthday, maybe play some golf. And Mo decided that we'd go meet, at, we could meet at, uh, at Coketown Woods, which is a golf course in Canada, and, and play some golf. Coketown Woods Golf Club with Larry Olson, Nick Westlock, and Mo Norman. And they don't seem to follow the rules out here. Uh. <laughs> and we were also playing with Nick Westlock, who's known as Nick the Wedge. What? Then we got you got crazy guys on film. <laughs> Nick was a, a well-known Canadian amateur golfer that him and Mo kind of hung out as kind of uh, the two buddies that ran around and played golf everywhere. Two famous Canadians running around in their later years playing golf at all these courses. And so we went out and played golf, and we were playing with Nick and Mo, and and Mo wanted to play 18 holes. And so that was kind of unusual to begin with because, um, you know, Mo wanted to keep going. So it was, it, was, it was a great day, and it was obviously, you know, Mo was showing his age, but he also was, his swing was always so technically great, and he always hit it good. Yeah, feels better, huh? He made some incredibly long putts during this round. And, and so we were sitting there at lunch. I said, Mo, you know, um, you know, my ambition is to, carry your legacy and your swing and teach as many people as I can in my lifetime when you're gone. And he said, well, what can one man do? What can one man do? That's what Mo kept saying. And so uh, I took that as kind of a challenge in a lot of ways with, with Graves Golf and what, what we could do as a company. But Mo also said to me after we finished the round, he said, uh, got to play golf from the heart. Got to play golf from the heart. And I always thought about, you know, what does that really mean to play golf from the heart? And why was that kind of his parting message for me? You know, why was that? It wasn't like go win tournaments or uh, go shoot 61, <laughs> you know? It was more about this kind of idea that golf is a game that gives you more than just shoot a score. So, I think that was an important message, and I think that was why Mo was telling me something at the very end of his days and, and the last time I was going to get to see him, that, that there was more to golf than just playing the game. Uh, it was You're getting something out of it, and it's doing something for you emotionally and spiritually. That's, and that's what I took from it. And so there was this restaurant. I don't remember the names of the restaurant, but there was a inside, next to the hotel where we stayed, the Radisson Hotel, across the street, there was three restaurants. There was a steakhouse upstairs. There was a kind of a bar and grill. And then downstairs was an Italian restaurant. And so we were all, all, all of us were debating. I was with Larry and Mo and Gus Maui and Audrey Maui. We were all debating, you know, where should we eat? Should we eat in the steakhouse, the Italian, whatever? And so we all decided that we wanted to eat in the steakhouse. But when we walked in the restaurant, Mo was sitting in the chair. Mo was kind of sitting kind of by himself. And he's holding a stack of papers. He had four or five of these pieces of papers. And on the paper was the play golf from the heart written on the piece of paper, play golf from the heart. And when I walk in and saw him, he handed me a paper and he goes, here you go, play golf from the heart. And he had, he had a bunch of them he was handing out to all of us. You know, kind of wanted to make sure we had a copy of this. And uh, so we're deciding where to eat. And we decide we want to go to the steakhouse. And Mo says, Mo says no, no, I want to go eat at the Italian place downstairs. And we're like, okay, whatever, whatever Mo wants. So we go downstairs to eat at the Italian restaurant. And as we go down there, Mo orders a steak. <laughs> and I, sometimes I think Mo just challenged you all the time. He had this little way of challenging you, you know, the way you're thinking. Um, but yeah, he handed out the play golf from the heart paper, and we talked about it at, at dinner, you know. And he's, he's like, you got to play golf from the heart. You got, you got to, it's the reason you play. And I think this is what motivates me as an instructor as well, is it's, it's funny because I'll, I'll talk to students and, you know, we all want to shoot lower scores. That's, that's what gives us a lot of joy, and we, we want to play our best and make putts and hit good shots and all that stuff that we do in, in the game of golf. And, of course, I, I want to do that too. But there's always the reason we play, 
and then and then the reason behind the reason that we play. You know, like you can say, I want to go beat my buddies, or I want to go shoot a low score, or I want to go. Uh, but that's why you play. Yeah, I get it. But the other side of it is, what is what are you getting out of it? Like, what's it doing for you? I mean, to me, playing golf from the heart, because anytime you you think about when you're in that heart space, is when you're in the moment, and that is why, in my opinion, people play golf, is to be in the moment. That's where we have the most joy. And I'll tell you the other side to that is. Think about the most stressful times you have in your life. Thinking about the future, thinking about the past, thinking about what might happen. And Mo, Mo would relate this to a round of golf. Like if you're thinking about the 18th hole and you're standing on the 5th tee and you're worried about what's going to happen later on in the round, you're not in playing golf in that moment. So Mo was teaching me a lesson. Live in the moment. Play golf from the heart. Live your life from the heart. And you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, wasn't it great getting to know Mo and spend time with Mo? But you had to listen to Mo. I mean, it wasn't just about golf. I mean, it wasn't just about, hey, he helped you with your swing, which to me, that's the reason I approached him in the first place. I wanted to be a better golfer, but a better person. I mean, Mo intuitively understood this stuff. He intuitively knew this stuff. And I think that's what golf did for him. Golf was a spiritual experience for him. It was definitely, it's definitely a spiritual experience for me. I know that when I'm on the course and I'm playing, there's probably no, nothing more fun than that for me. I teach this in the five-day schools. I teach about playing golf from the heart in, in our schools. And it's, it's kind of, in, in, it's mostly in our five-day programs when we have some time. And it, here's why. Here's why I teach it. Because people initially play golf because they want to be a better golfer. Right? I mean, everybody wants, I want to hit it better, I want to chip better, I want to putt better, I want to score better. My goal is to be a better golfer. And that's great, and that's why everybody starts there. But, can, but it goes back to the reason behind the reason. If it's all about scoring low, then every time you played badly, you'd quit. Right? I mean, you'd say, ah, I, I, I can't score low, I'm, I'm done. But we don't, we don't quit. Every time you hit a bad shot, You'd quit. You'd go, no. It's, it's, that, it's the reason behind the reason that the shot felt good, but I was in the moment. I spent that time in the moment. I'm practicing in the moment. I'm playing in the moment. I'm with my friends in that moment. I'm spending time in nature in that moment. So the reason I teach this is because if you can find that space and practice from there, play from there, experience life from there, then what you're doing, you get more out of what you're doing. And you practice better, you play better, you have more fun. Because at the end of the day, it's really about enjoying yourself. And I'll just, I'll give you an example. When I see people frustrated on the range or frustrated on the course, they're not in their moment. Because frustration, has, frustration is a way of saying, I'm hopeless, there's no hope here. Hopeless, right? When I hit a bad shot, I find a lot of humor in it, number one, because I learn from it, because I, I think it's a learning experience. Because it not, I'm not learning about why I hit the bad shot. That's not why I'm learning. I'm not learning, oh, was my face closed? Was my face? I'm not learning that. What I'm learning is how to deal with it emotionally, right? Because the minute I, I feel the, ugh, like, people will call themselves, you idiot. I remember Mo, when you, if you call yourself an idiot, Mo was like, watch how you treat yourself. Watch how you treat yourself. And that's another lesson, right? I have a personal experience where I play with celebrities a lot. Like I, get, I go play with people. And I always have this piece of me that wants to impress people. You know, I want to impress people. And I'm getting better at not caring about that. Like just saying I'm there for me. I, I'm there just to have an experience. And just whatever happens, happens, you know. It's still a part of me that like, and you know when when I'm the kind of the when I'm the face of the single plane swing and I'm out there demonstrating it, you you want to perform well because you want people to think oh the swing is great, but I find a personal attachment is is what sometimes you know I, I, I I'm working on it <laughs> I'm working on that um, Mo I think there's a large period of time in Mo's life when he was obsessed with ball striking and becoming a great golfer because he identified. See, I think that, that identification with being a great golfer and being a great ball striker gave him a sense of purpose and, 
and gave him a sense of identity, no question about it. And the best record the ball the world's ever known. Not by my say, I don't believe I am. All the best players and best teachers will say, who's the best record of the ball ever? Not the best player, but the best record of the ball. I can hit the ball 99 times out of 100 right on the nut, right on the nose. And I think that's kind of funny because I think that even I have identified with things like that, like, oh, I want to be a great golfer. Um, I want to be, I want to be a great teacher. You know, I mean, I think I identify with things. They, 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 they feed our ego in a lot of ways. That's who we make. You know, people ask me, "What do you do for a living?" I'm a golf instructor, right? So that's our identity. And I think that Mo's identity was a great golfer, great ball striker, champion golfer. And then there's so much more fun if you can just go let it go and just have a good time. And whatever happens, happens. Acceptance is a big deal. That comes from here. Acceptance. You always think, well, if you play well, you have a good time. And if you don't play well, you don't have a good time. I didn't find that to be true for me. I could actually go play badly. I remember playing a tournament. It was, it was called a, I think it was called a teardrop tour. And I was in Arkansas. And I had the lead going into the final round. And I messed it up. I, messed, I, I screwed up a couple of shots. And I, and I, I, got, I got beat. And I, I hit some really bad shots on the last few holes. And I lost. And I'm driving home from that tournament, and you'd think I, I was defeated, like, oh, I lost. I was so excited about that experience because, number one, I learned from it. Like, I learned what happened, what caused this uh, kind of falling apart on the last few holes. And because I could reflect and say, I didn't stay in my moment. I didn't just enjoy the moment. I, I was counting the first place check on the 15th hole. You know I mean? I was like, I was like, uh, this is going to be fun winning this tournament, and all of a sudden it all fell apart because I got ahead of myself. And that's what it really, if we can live our lives and play golf, like Mo was talking about, from a space of in that present moment, I think that's where Mo was going with all this. And you don't live here, you live in here. This is just what you do to live here, you know, the vehicle. And um, I think that's a big part of what he was sharing. And, and I saw a lot of that. Uh, in my conversations with him in the last, at least last year. I, I know there's a story where a friend of mine told me that before Mo passed away, he was giving away all his golf clubs. You know, he was giving away all his equipment. He was giving everything away. And um, it, in a sense, it's like, hey, I'm giving gifts of my knowledge and my, these are the clubs I use and this is why I did this. And he's sharing his experiences of life and this is part of his sharing. And I think, I think if you can give the people the knowledge that he had, I mean, just think about the knowledge that he that he had at that time in his life. And, and all of a sudden he's realizing that, hey, the real gift here is more of like live your life in every moment, play golf from the heart. Mo used to always recite a poem called Golf is Happiness. It's a great poem. Matter of fact, we should listen to Mo actually tell the poem, because Mo, Mo has it memorized, right? So, he, so I used to listen to Mo tell me this poem all the time. And in the poem it talks about what golf is really giving to us. It also is talking about how it builds character and, and how, and that's what I'm talking about is we can, the game gives us a lot. Um, it's, a, it's a lesson for life and that's what this poem is really all about. If people only knew what happiness was, what is happiness? Happiness is achievement. What's the father of achievement? Motivation. What's the mother? Encouragement. The fine golf swing is truly achievement. Man may lie, cheat, and steal for gain. But you'll never gain the golf swing. To gain the golf swing, man must work. It's work without toil. It's intoxication without the hangover. It's stimulation without the pills. It's defeating, yet it generates courage. It is humbling, yet it ennobles the human spirit. It is dignity, yet it rejects the ruins. Its price is high, yet its rewards are richer. Some say it's a boy's pastime, yet it builds men. It's a buffer for the stresses of today's living. It cleanses the mind, rejuvenates the body. There's these things and many more for those of us who know and love it. Golf is truly happiness. And boy, don't ever forget it. I have a hard time resonating with people that don't see golf this way because I'll give you an example. Everybody makes this big deal about how far we hit the golf ball, right? How far do you hit it? I don't care. I don't care. Are you finding joy in playing the game? Are you, are, are you, yeah, I don't, I'm not saying don't, don't try to get better. I'm not saying don't try to hit it as far as you possibly can under the premise that you have good technique. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, 
Are you have finding joy in your golf game? And if you're not hitting it 300 yards, it, are you finding that ho hopelessness in that? Which I think is stupid. I, so that's why I'm like the whole distance thing. Great. If you want to hit it farther and that's all you care about and you find joy in that, great. I'm just not into that. I'm into joy in the game, hitting good shots, uh, enjoying the moment of playing golf, enjoying the fact that I improved that much better today. Like, like that's what I get joy out of. I get joy out of that much improvement. And so that's the golf is happiness poem isn't, I only, I'm only happy if I'm hitting it 310 yards. You know, it's not that. It's, it's golf is a sense of finding yourself. And there's so much joy in there if you let the game give back to you. And that's what the golf is happiness poem is really all about. And that's why I like it. That's why I think it's a great thing. And that's why Mo talked about it all the time. And, you know, maybe there's a piece of that where, where Mo was saying, hey, this is my parting message, that you can live your life in the moment. You can play golf from the heart. You can live from the heart. And this is how you do it. And I think that that was really, really, I mean, it was a fitting parting message to not only have my final dinner with Mo, play my final round with Mo, and also uh, have him give me this as his kind of final message. It kind of all works out that way.